Hi, I'm Joe, the Video Whisperer, and this is the Lighting for Video That Doesn't Suck series, Part 3. Now, I originally wasn't going to talk about color temperature so soon, but a couple of things prompted it. One, a comment from uh, somebody who saw the last video and requested a video on this subject. And two, I don't need a model for this. I can do it myself. So you're stuck with me. Now, color temperature is based on a scale like Fahrenheit or Celsius, it's called the Kelvin scale, invented by Lord Kelvin back in the 1800s. And <clears throat> it works on this theory. Consider a black sphere, totally solid carbon black. It reflects no light at all. If you were to then take this block of pure carbon and start heating it on the Kelvin scale at about 1500 degrees, it would glow sort of a dull red, about the color of candlelight. And if you heated it up just a little bit more, you'd get up to say about 3000 degrees Kelvin, and now you're into incandescent light bulbs, the, the type you have in your house. 2800, 3000 degrees Kelvin. You heat it up just a little bit more to 3200 degrees Kelvin, basically what your studio halogen lights are balanced for. All movie studio lights are balanced for 32K. If you take this black sphere and heat it up to 4,000 degrees Kelvin, you'll get the color emitted by the light of the late afternoon sun. So it's still uh, affected by the blue sky, but the late afternoon sun is starting to get more and more yellow. You get about 4,000 degrees. Heat it up a bit more to 4,500, 5,000 degrees, you're getting into the color emitted by fluorescent lighting. You heat it up to 5,500 degrees, you get what's called daylight. Meaning, daylight is the standard the film industry set years ago. Daylight film in the old days was balanced for 55K. The electronic settings on your camera for exterior or daylight is 55K, and so forth. Um, so it's called daylight. Now let's heat it up a bit more to 7,000 degrees and you've got the light of an overcast day, which is minus sun because it's hidden behind the clouds, a bit of blue sky and white clouds, 7,000 degrees. Now on a clear day, the sky alone, minus the sun, say in the shade, the shade of a building where you're only lit by the blue sky, now your color temperature is 9,000 degrees. So how does this relate to videography and photography? Well. Unlike your eyes, which automatically adjust for color temperature and automatically adjust for exposure, cameras can't. Cameras need a standard to go by to be able to judge a correct exposure. In terms of color, it's called a white balance or a white standard. If you hold a white card up in front of the camera in, say, these lighting conditions, and you say, camera, this is white, and it goes, okay, got it that's white and it adjusts all its internal circuits so that that will come out white pretty simple if you're then to take the camera outside into completely different and bluer lighting conditions and it still thinks this is white guess what's going to happen your picture is going to be all blue so when you go outside you hold that card and you say okay camera now this is white and it goes got it and it balances that to be white, and now all your colors outside will be true. So the eye is amazing. It just automatically adjusts all these things. And to the best of their ability, the automatic settings on your cameras are meant to emulate that sort of thing. But they can only do it so far. But still, these adjustments, whether they're automatic or manual, are done to a standard. So why not just use the automatic settings on your camera for color temperature then? Well, that's a good question. So you take your camera outside, it's on automatic. How does it know what white is? How does it know what the standard is? It's got to do some sort of interpolation to figure out what white must be. And it's not always going to make the right decision. That automatic white balancing is pretty good, but it's not perfect. Now, if you say, that's white, it'll nail it dead on. That'll be white and then all the rest of the colors in the scene will be rendered true. So, for the best quality, do your manual white balance setting every time you change scenes, like 
if you start shooting in the sh all right here's here's a good point so let's say you set it for outside quote unquote outside and go that's white and you're outside and you're shooting you know the sun is shining this that and the other thing and now you go into the shade of a tree what's going to happen well as you as, as i mentioned earlier Outside, your color temperature is about 5,500 degrees Kelvin. You go into the shade of a tree and it jumps up to 9,000 degrees and you haven't told your camera to change to that. So you're going to have a very blue scene, aren't you? So if you want a true color in the shade of a tree, you're going to have to go into the shade of the tree and go, okay, now that's white. And it'll fix it. So you get true color in the shade of the tree. So... That's the practical aspect of, of white balance, white balance setting and all that. There's a few other things to know. Here we are in tungsten halogen lighting, 32K. At this band of the Kelvin scale, a 50 degree, 100 degree difference is quite noticeable. The difference between these lights, which are 32K, and if I was to turn those off and only turn on... Um, lamps like that one back there, which is a normal household bulb, the scene would go considerably redder. Whereas outside, the difference between 5500 degrees Kelvin and 5550 is negligible. In fact, the difference between 5500 degrees and 5700 degrees Kelvin is negligible. Okay, so inside it's a lot more critical to white balance to get true color. Okay, so let's do a, a simple demonstration. Right now, my camera is set to 3200 degrees Kelvin. It's on a preset for tungsten lighting, 32K. These lights are 32K. Without changing my lights, I'm now going to change the camera to a daylight setting. I'm going to make no other changes but switching it to daylight. Just a second. So there you go. The camera thinks the color temperature out here is 5600 degrees Kelvin, but in actual fact, it's 3200 degrees Kelvin because these are 32K studio lights. All right, now the next thing I'm going to do is change the key light from a tungsten halogen to a fluorescent, which is balanced for 55K, which is what the camera's set for right now. I'm not going to change anything else. I'm only going to change the key light to a 55K light. All right, the key is 55K. That's what the camera's set for, so it should be rendering me, the subject, more or less accurately in terms of color, except to whatever degree it may be polluted by some of the tungsten light bouncing around the room. But here's the thing. Understanding color temperature, you can now play with it and manipulate it. You could do this on purpose. I wouldn't do it in this scene necessarily, but I can give you an example. Corporate interview. You've got a half an hour to do the interview. They point to a room. You can do it in there. What color are the walls? guarantee you the walls are going to be white and there's no decorations in there and you go oh my god this is going to be crap okay try this light in with tungsten lighting set the camera balance to tungsten and what's going to happen the background is going to go blue your white wall is going to go bluish now why is that an advantage because facial tones against the blue background are nice much better than a white background okay well, that's the subject in a nutshell. If you want to know how to do manual white balancing, which is quite simple, it'll be covered in the manual of your camera. But the main thing is you're going to want to be recording onto your tape or onto your card as accurate an exposure and color balance as you can get. So that in post-production, if you do anything at all, it's little tweaks to make it that much better. Not salvaging a complete balls-up mess for which you will kick yourself, I assure you, because I have done it myself.